Hey, welcome to the 15th installment of Swan's Japanese Horror Reviews. Today we are looking at one of my favorite movies, and this comes to us from the director of Juon, Takashi Shimizu. This movie, of course, is Marebito. Now, the plot of Marebito is a very strange one, and it's unlike a lot of other conventional horror films. Um, there's not a lot of spooky scenes or gory scenes, in fact, but instead it creates a very strange vibe uh, all throughout the film, and it's a very perverse and uh, very um, maddening film that just seems to spiral deeper and deeper into insanity. But uh, we'll start from the beginning. It stars a cameraman who's brilliantly played by Shinya Tsukamoto. Um, if you don't know who that is, he is the director of uh, other classic uh, Japanese films such as The Iron Man. Um, so yeah, he is great um, to be picked for this role and I'm really glad that he's in it. So he's a cameraman and he's obsessed with death and then one day he comes across a, a, he's watching a video of a man on a subway who kills himself and he wants to know, you know, what did this guy see um, that led him to do that, to commit suicide. So he goes to the subway and um, he finds that there's like a secret um, like civilization and you know all these tunnels that are underneath Tokyo and he keeps going deeper and deeper into the tunnels and he comes across like the ghost of the man that killed himself, at least we think it's a ghost at first, we're not really sure. And eventually, he gets to the secret like city that's underneath um, the subway systems, and he finds a girl. And she's uh, shackled to the wall or whatever, so he takes the girl home with, her, with him, and um, thus begins, you know, his new life with this, this uh, girl who's humanoid, but doesn't seem to speak any language or eat anything that, you know, he's been preparing for her. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty weird setup for a story, but um, it allows for a lot of interesting and uh, very peculiar situations that um, I haven't seen in a lot of movies, so I was really glad that there's a lot of originality in this one. All of the performances in this movie are spectacular. Um, Shinya Tsukamoto in particular does a great job. He was he was born to play uh, this role as this um, death-obsessed cameraman. I mean, this kind of bizarre, creepy, you know, story that you could try to make sense of it all, but in the end, it maybe it's more about you know how you feel from watching the movie than trying to make sense of everything because there is a surprise twist at the end. Um, as well as a lot of little subplots that are going on in the background that if you try to connect them, uh, get some really interesting results. Um, Tsukamoto actually narrates a lot of the film, you know, it explains to the viewers what's happening, and this is done very well. Um, there's a nice musical score to it that's very creepy, atmospheric. The girl that plays um, the, the woman that he finds underground, uh, she does a great job, very convincing, very scary. So yeah, everything in this movie is done top notch and it's amazing that it was only filmed in eight days. So uh, Takashi Shimizu, the director, did this, you know, all the filming in, you know, a little bit over a week, which is uh, fantastic, you know, that um, it took him, you know, such little time to make such a great movie. So, uh, you know, I think that was really cool. But yeah, if you go in expecting like um, another Juon or a Grudge or a Ringu or a Dark Water or something, you're not going to get one of those. Uh, like I said, there's not a lot of scary jump out of your seat moments, and there's not even a lot of gory moments. Uh, though there are a few bloody scenes here and there, um, they're few and far between. It's more of like a psychological um, descent into one man's you know, madness, which I think is one of the main themes of the movie. It's perception, how we view things. Um, we see how this obsessed cameraman views you know, his world, um, and we see this on multiple levels, and you'll understand, you know, as soon as you watch the movie. But I think, you know, um, it's a good, you know, message on, you know, how we view the world um, in the modern age. So, definitely, I think there's some great substance to this one. The DVD actually comes to us from Tartan Asia Extreme. Uh, they did a superb job. We have interviews with uh, Shinya Tsukamoto, the main actor, um, the director, Takashi Shimizu, um, the producer, and we have some trailers for other titles and the trailer for this one. So uh, yeah, they did a great job. If I had to give a score to this movie, I would probably give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's Shimizu's greatest work. Um, I'd give the DVD a 7 out of 10, a lot of good stuff. My really only you know, minor complaint is that it does drag on in a few scenes. Um, certainly, some of the parts are a bit slower than I would like. But um, overall, you know, you just got to let yourself get immersed into the film. I think you'll enjoy it a great deal because it is really, really a good movie. So yeah, Mare Bito by Takashi Shimizu, really great Japanese horror film. It's unlike 
you know, probably 99% of the stuff that's on the market right now, you're not going to get, you know, a haunted house, you're not going to get a bunch of, like, uh, ghosts with, you know, long black hair or whatever, you know, but instead you're going to get this really, you know, dark and perverse story about, you know, perception and madness, so I think if you want something different, this is definitely a good title to go after, so, uh, yeah, Mari Vito, please go pick it up, and uh, I guess this is Swan signing off, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.